on us, but we're used to doing that drive between Vegas and Reno, which takes, depends on if you're driving or if I'm driving, it'll take anywhere from six hours to maybe eight hours. <laughs> so I'm glad to be out of the car. I'm glad to be back home. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your friends and family. But let's let's dive into the current events, because today that's what we're doing. We're touching on current events. And there was a very interesting article that was posted in the Reno Gazette Journal. Um, it was updated yesterday. And uh, it does a whole breakdown on who's to blame for 2022 Republican election losses in Washoe County. And guess who was all a part of this article? It wasn't Democrats. It was Republicans. And it was Republicans like you and I and, and many of our other friends who were bold enough and fearless enough to call things out, call people out, call misbehavior out um, leading up to the election. And so now you have more people coming forward since the election is done um, who are now saying, okay, we witnessed this misbehavior. We witnessed uh, the bullying and the harassing. We were a part of it, but I guess it's better late than never for them to be speaking out. But Well, I think what's interesting is it wasn't an article that talked about what the Democrats did to win. Uh, right. You know, it talked about the Republicans losing. Normally, your opponent is causing uh, that loss, or usually you hope that's, that's the case. The whole article was about how the Republican Party had self-imploded. And what Amy's talking about is uh, where, and this is one of the things that not only I mentioned in my blog last week, uh, and but also Chuck Muth mentioned in his blog is, you know, the Republican Party should be a party of the big tent. You know, if you uh, put, put your mic closer. The Republican Party should be the party of the big tent. We have the policies that the vast majority of Americans agree with if you uh, go down the line on them. And we should be welcoming those people. And even if they disagree with us on a, uh, on a topic here or there, but instead uh, the Republican P state party and the county uh, parties in Washoe and Douglas and Clark, uh, they were running people out of the party if they didn't agree with 100 percent of what uh, their leadership said. And, and it, it, it paid the price at the polls. It did. And um, I do want to put out, though, a congratulations to Colleen Westlake, who um, I have, I've had on the show a couple times, and she was actually one of the survivors. And so she she came through on the W side. She ran for Washoe School Board of Trustees and won. And But she was somebody who was quick and smart enough to realize that she needed to also distance herself um, from these county so-called leaders who were bullying people and I think that benefited her. Well, it is really nice to see her when she was quoted quite a bit in the article. I don't know a lot about uh, some of the things that she discussed in the article. I think you probably had to be running on the, a, uh, the ticket here in Washoe County to see it, but she certainly had a lot of strong opinions and, uh, and the article focused a lot on her. Yeah, it did. And so once again, we're talking about the Reno Gazette Journal um, article that was recently posted titled, Who's to Blame for 2022 Re Republican Election Losses in Washoe County? And it was written by Mark Robison, but it had, it, the whole article was basically one Republican after the next, um, pointing out how, as you mentioned, we should be a big tent. We used to be a big tent. And uh, it no longer is a big tent. And so until this pendulum swings back to sanity and you're allowed to have differing opinions, um, I think we're going to struggle. Well, yeah, there was a great line in here and it wasn't, it was, I think it was meant by this guy, um, Park, the, the county party chair, uh, Washington County party chair to be um, positive for himself. But I think it really shows um, Brian Parks, Isn't that the problems name? that he has uh, as a state chair County chair, yeah. County chair, and why he lost. Um, and I was trying to find it. Uh, but anyways, it basically said this. The article talked about a number of the um, Washoe County elected officials or post past elected officials that came out in support of some Democrats and uh, how they were thrown out of the party by uh, the county chair. And uh, he said, those aren't Republicans. <laughs> we threw them out of the party. And I just think to myself who died and made him boss right um he can decide who's a republican and who's not a republican these people uh ran for public office had the courage to do so uh 
they came out and they supported who they thought was best for uh, our state and our and our country. And uh, and now you're going to say they're not a Republican. And that leads me to what I just received. You know, and my wife and I were very close friends with this lady in Las Vegas. And she had sent me an email in response to uh, my uh, blog on why I felt the Republicans had lost the last election. And, and your blog is titled, Can You Handle the Truth? Can You Handle the Truth? Well, anyway, she said that she was so disappointed in myself and my wife because we came out and supported a Democrat or Democrats uh, over a Republican. And her argument was, Danny, you know this is a team sport and you need to support all the team players. And my response to her was, I agree completely with you, but you have the wrong team. Our team isn't the Republican Party. Our team is the state of Nevada and our country. And what is best for the state of Nevada and our country? I want to do what's best for them. I'm not going to do what's best just for the Republican Party if the Republican Party is wrong. And I laid, laid it into her that way in a nice way. And she sent me back a conciliatory email. But th that's the point is, you know, these, this guy Park is over here talking about uh, how he banned uh, an ex-sheriff. And uh, yeah. you know, I mean, these are people that have represented with dignity and 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 positive work for the, the state of Nevada and Washoe County. Not just an ex-sheriff, but an ex-congressman. You had lobbyists. You had, I mean, all kinds of party yeah. officials. And 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 uh, and they're going to say, well, they're no longer Republican because this guy Park says so because he 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 can, he he has a county chair can ban him from just the county party. I know. I just think the part the party is a mess when you start uh, doing that. And you know what happens? And I said this before. And I said this on this radio show. When you start eliminating people that have been very supportive of the Republican Party because you don't agree with something that they've done, then you shrink the tent and you shrink the voters. And it isn't just him or or her that you are, are losing the vote, but it's everybody that's associated with them that think that you treated them poorly. And when you lose by a few thousand votes like Adam Laxalt did, it, it very well could have been the difference. Yep, 100%. So we've got more to talk about uh, when you come back to us on Amy. And uh, we are just happy that you have joined us. At Northern Nevada Family Dental, we are proud to announce a wide range of advanced dental services by way of the Photona Lightwalker Laser. The Lightwalker Laser can efficiently and effectively treat most periodontal problems from deep persistent pocketing to peri-implantitis and a multitude of conditions in between. Have cold sores? We can inhibit the cycle of the virus and sometimes even prevent them from occurring. Do you have a snoring or CPAP problem? Through the amazing healing power of light, we can treat tissues inside the mouth without anesthesia, appliances, or cutting so that after just one treatment, most people sleep better and quieter that same night. By using the power of the laser intraorally, we can also smooth facial wrinkles and tighten sagging necklines, all without you having to be numb and there's no downtime. It can even be done on a lunch break. Through the FDA-approved Power of Light, these treatments and many more are now available at Northern Nevada Family Dental in Sparks. Have I piqued your interest? Give us a call at 626-7772 or visit us at northernnevadafamilydental.com. Adopt US Kids presents what to expect when you're expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying totally just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of subs way. Could be a spoken number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one fave. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice fresh sandwiches, port of subs. <laughs> 
Port of Subs Meatball Mariner Bundle is mmm, mmm, good. Tender, juicy meatballs on savory, fresh-baked rosemary Swiss bread covered with zesty marinara and provolone cheese, then grilled to perfection. Your Meatball Mariner Bundle comes with cheddar sun chips, an ice-cold Dr. Pepper, and a baked fresh daily classic chocolate chip cookie. Fall in love with the Meatball Mariner Bundle. It's a meal that even your nono will love. Visit your neighborhood Port of Subs today or order online at portofsubs.com or on our app. Port of Subs, slicing fresh for 50 years. And we're back on Amy on 93.7 FM, americamatters.us, and we are so glad that you tuned in and joined us. I've, I'm sitting here next to my husband and Douglas County Commissioner, Danny Tarkanian, and we were just touching on the latest Reno Gazette Journal article that um, that came out. And, and I wanted to make some corrections on, on the names. It's uh, David Parks is a state party chair. And, uh, David? Oh. No. Bruce. Bruce. He said Bruce. Bruce. It was Bruce and he's the county chair, Washoe County chair. Yes. Whoever. I, I got to get my name straight. But anyways, the people that have made the endorsements that he attacked were Reno Police Chief Jason Soto, Washoe County Sheriff Mike Haley, and uh, State Senator Jody Stevens, in addition to my wife, uh, Amy Tarkanian, and former U.S. Senator Dean Heller. Uh, quite a list of uh, pretty darn re good Republicans that have done a lot for the Republican Party. And this was Mr. Parks' statement. Republicans don't vote for Democrats. Those are not Republicans because we disavow them. <laughs> so he disavows them, and they're no longer Republicans. I think right, this, guy, right. this guy needs a sense of humility. Yes, no, I would agree. And so once again, that was an article written in the Reno Gazette, and um, it was titled, let me pull it back up so that we know we're talking about, Who's to Blame for 2022 Republican Election Losses in Washoe County? But let's transition, because you've started a blog, and um, you already sent out uh, two Right, yes. you got two, and you're working on a third. And um, if people want to subscribe, you can go to Tarks Truth at Gmail dot com. That's T A R K S T R U T H at Gmail dot com. And you can just read probably some of the most illuminating yeah. <laughs> uh, thoughts uh, that are that my husband and I have been discussing, and he's he's put into words. And so obviously, the Reno Gazette. Uh, reads my blog because they stole my topic. Is Why the Republicans right? failed so badly in 2012? Yeah. Uh, I was that was just a jest. Uh, yeah, well, and, and your your blog though, I love the name that you came up with. Can you handle the truth? And um, I mean, it doesn't take a, a literally a rocket scientist to come up with something like this, but it's so perfect. I think for what we're what we've gone through, what we're dealing with, and where we need to go. And that's kind of what your blog is all about. Yeah, what I wanted to do was talk about topics that people are too scared to discuss because they feel it might hurt them, whether it's politically, whether it's uh, with friends or, uh, you know, creates, professionally create some hate uh, tweets and Facebook yeah. messages. You know, um, I, I, I think it's time that we have an open, frank discussion of what's going on in our country. And, you know, first and foremost has been these elections and what's happened to the Republican Party when they should have won in a uh, tsunami. Instead, uh, uh, it was the pink ripple, as you said. The, t the pink tidal pool. <laughs> pink tidal pool. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so I discussed it. And, I, you know, I, I talked about the, the first thing is I talked about where the Republican Party had been and what happened with Trump and then the people that tried to emulate Trump and how that really backfired at the end. I've been involved in politics in Nevada for over 20 years now, and I've seen one Republican after another who ran as a really staunch uh, conservative that once they get elected to office, they, they vote more like a liberal moderate. And right. it's infuriated the Republican base. And then there are other Republicans that, you know, they might be wanting to vote more conservative, but then they get attacked by the liberal media and they back away from those attacks and they start voting more as a moderate or liberal to, so that the, the media will like them. And right. again, that infuriated the base. And then came along Trump. Trump was obnoxious, rude, uh, demeaning, but he stood up and fought back against 
uh, the liberal media. He stood up and fought and defended the uh, conservative principles that he articulated as America first policies. He didn't back down at all. And he was a complete opposite of what had infuriated the base for over 20 years. So everybody resonated to him. They either right. ignored uh, his personality and some of the things that he did, or they liked it because they said, hey, this is what's getting things done. And it worked for Trump, at least it did in 2016. And who knows moving forward. But you know, there were a lot of opportunists that wanted to run for office that said, hey, I see how Trump got elected, so I'm going to be like them. So they started saying really disgusting, rude, mean things to people, uh, bullying people around. And we had two of them on the last ballot, um, Michelle Fiore, who ran for treasurer, and Sigal Chada, who ran for attorney general. And they thought, hey, who could be the biggest woman Trump out there? Who can who can outdo the other uh, uh, acting like Trump? And it turned voters off. Independents were supposed to go for Republicans big time this past election, and they had every reason why. They had one of the, we had one of the lowest approval rating for any president in office, uh, highest inflation in 40 years, open borders, crime skyrocketing throughout major cities. Independents should have gravitated towards the Republican Party in large numbers, but they were turned off by these Trump mini me's or wannabes, whatever you want to call them. And they voted against uh, many Republicans. And you saw that uh, with not only the results of those two elections, but also other people on the ballot, uh, Adam Laxalt. I know yeah, that they got the brunt of it. They, they, they carried some of that too. Yeah, no, I, I would agree, unfortunately. And usually if you have terrible candidates at the top, then it trickles down and it affects the down ticket. However, it w went the opposite this time. And so we were able to get Governor Lombardo and um, Lieutenant Governor, um, oh my gosh, I'm blinking on this, Stavros, Stavros Anthony, Anthony, and um, then Andy Matthews. But we didn't do enough. And they're basically going to be sitting there twiddling their thumbs for, for the next couple years um, because we have a Democratic majority. Well, we lost three seats in the assembly, which now means that the uh, Democrats have a supermajority in the assembly, so they can right. override any veto uh, um, Governor Lombardo has. Now, the Senate, uh, we lost one seat there, but we, they don't have a supermajority yet. They're one short. But in two years from now, there's a couple of vulnerable Republican state senators up for re-election. If we lose one of those, they're, they're going to have a supermajority in both chambers, which means they could veto anything Governor Lombardo does and uh, make some basically a lame duck. It was a bad year. And yep. you, know, you have to you figure out what, what the reasons were. And I think one of them was you had these people that wanted to pretend like they were Trump, but it turned voters off and it really hurt them. I, on the other end, you know, you see somebody who supported President Trump's policies, implemented them, fought back on them, but didn't have the same attack mode. He didn't demean and, 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 harass, and, and people. harass people. And that's Governor DeSantis in Florida. He yes. acted more as a statesman, but he implemented the policies of the Republicans. I, I think the vast majority of the country agrees with. And he won in a landslide in, in Florida. I don't know when was the last time in that swing state that someone won by 20 percentage points. He won Miami-Dade County, a huge Democrat county, uh, by double digits. And it shows that if you articulate and fight for the America first policies, but you do it in a statesman way, uh, you're going to be hard to beat. Yeah, no, I would agree. And then I, I every time we have this discussion, I also throw in uh, Governor Yunkin and Nikki Haley. And I think that, you know, in any one of those three emulates um, exactly what I think the nation desires. And like you just said, a statesman or a stateswoman, somebody who can be strong, and, I'll um, take Christy Nome over. Oh, uh, Christy Nome too. Let's uh, throw her in. Over Haley. Haley. Haley did some questionable things early on, uh, to uh, when President Trump was running for office, and she didn't come out and support him when he was running against Hillary Clinton. I don't care what you thought of President Trump's personality. Nobody who believes in what was best for our country and conservative principles would have voted for uh, or supported or helped Hillary Clinton. And right. I, I think Nikki uh, went over the line on that. Okay, fair enough. I, yes, you're, you're right. I just remember, though, when she was at the UN and she raised her hand and she stood firm for the U.S. And I just thought that was so impressive to watch a female in a room filled with a bunch of, I mean, there are some other females, but male majority who really don't give um, women credit and they're not allowed to have 
credit. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing is President Trump appointed her as the ambassador yeah. uh, to the UN for the United States. And obviously he forgave whatever um, slights that she may have given him. So you know, maybe the public should too. And she, she obviously, she's a fighter. She's out there defending and, and arguing with people. And, uh, and she's a very uh, strong conservative. She did a good job uh, as a. Yeah, a but governor. I think you're right though on Christy Noem. I, I shouldn't forget about Christy Noem or even Tim Scott. Tim Scott's impressive. Yeah. I remember the first time we met him, and it was at a, was it called a Monday night meeting, or what was that called? Monday night meeting in New York City. Yeah, I and was I running, sat next to him. I was running for the U.S. Senate seat uh, in 2010. He was running, I believe, for a congressional or maybe the Senate seat in, in South Carolina at the time. And then he dropped out of that race and got into a race that he won, and now he's on the cusp of being possibly the – uh, president of the United States. I know he's incredible. Now we we do have some other issues, and that being, you mentioned leaders, Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy, and those two yahoos. They they chose their own personal power over country. You know, one of the things that that people don't understand it what goes on behind the scenes and where the money goes that you, you're donating. Uh, now, Mitch McConnell and uh, McCarthy they raised hundreds of millions of dollars. To, and they told their donors, we're going to use this money to win back the Senate and win back uh, Congress. And instead of doing using all that money for that, they spent tens of millions of dollars helping Republican candidates win primaries in the House and in the Senate, Mikowski to win the Senate seat against other Republicans because – those Republicans they supported and funded were going to vote for them in a leadership position. So instead of using that money to win a Republican seat over a Democrat, they wasted tens of millions of dollars uh, in Republican against Republican battles. I, and it, they did it only so that they would get reelected in, in the power. And it looks like McCarthy needs every one of those votes because he's, it's, it's going to be a close call for him, although I think he's probably going to get a, a You'll squeak in. Squeak in again. But anyways, I just think it's wrong. You know, look at, I, I don't know. You, people go into politics for different reasons. Maybe they, there's a lot of them that are there just so they can enjoy the power they have. To me, the only thing you carry with you when you die is what you've been able to accomplish when you've been alive. Uh, you don't carry anything else with Your you. Your legacy that you leave. The impact is yeah. more than a legacy. Legacy people can 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 mold. Yeah. The, the impact you have on other people's lives, a positive impact. And if you're going to, do that, then you go into public service so you can make the positive impact on everybody's lives. And that means getting more people elected that you uh, that can help our country, not get people elected that are going to help you. Yeah. Well, OK, well, please stay stay with us. We've got more to discuss on Amy 93.7 FM America Matters US. At Northern Nevada Family Dental, we are proud to announce a wide range of advanced dental services by way of the Photona Lightwalker Laser. The Lightwalker Laser can efficiently and effectively treat most periodontal problems from deep persistent pocketing to peri-implantitis and a multitude of conditions in between. Have cold sores? We can inhibit the cycle of the virus and sometimes even prevent them from occurring. Do you have a snoring or CPAP problem? Through the amazing healing power of light, we can treat tissues inside the mouth without anesthesia, appliances, or cutting so that after just one treatment, most people sleep better and quieter that same night. By using the power of the laser intraorally, we can also smooth facial wrinkles and tighten sagging necklines, all without you having to be numb and there's no downtime. It can even be done on a lunch break. Through the FDA-approved Power of Light, these treatments and many more are now available at Northern Nevada Family Dental in Sparks. Have I piqued your interest? Give us a call at 626-7772 or visit us at northernnevadafamilydental.com. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to lrpnv.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones. Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you, and they have a professional assistant on-site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775-356-1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, 
books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business, just call 775-356-1004 or go to lrpmv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Man on the Map, does every week. Just go to lrpmv.com. That's lrpmv.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all-season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet where comfort and your feet meet. And we're back on Amy, 93.7 And we're back on Amy on 93.7 FM, americamatters.us. Thanks so much for joining us on this beautiful Monday. And um, we were just uh, delving into Danny's blog, which is brand new, and we'd love for you to subscribe. You can go to Tark's Truth at gmail.com. It's T-A-R-K-S. T-R-U-T-H at gmail.com. And it's titled, Can You Handle the Truth? And the reason why he's doing this, and um, and I'm, I guess, his assistant in this this endeavor, uh, it's because we, we want to discuss where things went wrong, where we are now, how can we fix it, and we need to be able to have... Um, discussion and dissenting opinions and uh, agreement all the above without being told you're a bad person yeah it's interesting because I've had a lot of people uh, email me back and say how much they've appreciated the blog and I've had some people that are just mean and vicious so they didn't like it and I think that's what you're going to expect you're going to uh, you're gonna if you if you're gonna talk the truth you're going to have um, a dissenting opinion because um, some people aren't going to agree with you and some people can't handle the truth. <laughs> yeah. uh, but let's get back into your, your blog because you still have a, a good chunk to um, cover. And it, we were just talking about the money issue where you had leaders like Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, um, fundraise millions and millions of dollars, but they used it to pen Republican against Republican and instead of Republican against Democrat because they needed their um, – their votes for their leadership positions. And so they chose power over a uh, country. And, um, but there's another issue. Oh, go ahead. Well, this whole blog is about, you know, why the Republicans did so poorly in the 2022 mm -hmm. election. So there's a lot of different topics. The first one we discussed at length, and that was where people were trying to emulate Trump and it turned off the voters because they, nobody they can do Trump. They Only might, Trump. They might accept uh, President Trump's, um, um, uh, verbal, verbal assaults because of he was the first to do it and he performed on his promises. Um, some people didn't uh, accept Trump for that. Uh, but when somebody else tries to do it, all it does is turn off uh, anybody but the most ardent partisan uh, supporters. And yeah, then the, sec backfired. the second thing was about the money that was raised by the two leaders of the Republic of uh, the Senate and the House, where the donors wanted that money to go take back the Senate and the House. And some of a lot of the money did go uh, in, in races against Democrats, but tens of millions of dollars did not. And I just think it's, it's disingenuous to go out and raise money and claim it's going to be used for something. And instead, you use it to protect your leadership position. Right. Now, the other thing that we have working against us unfortunately is uh the reed machine 
it still exists. Well, let's talk about the fundraising of the Democrats at Blue because it goes yeah. right into the fundraising with uh, McConnell. So you raise money through personal donations. Uh, when I say you, a candidate does or the party does. You could raise it through personal or, or company donations if it's going to a PAC. But the Democrats created something, and I, I believe it started in 2016. At least that's when I first became aware of it. It's called Act Blue. Act Blue is where the Democrat Party as, it's, uh, as a whole – has identified millions of Democrat donors or reached out to them and now has a great uh, fundraising list. And they point out what are the key races they need help in and for these donors to donate to them. And millions of donors are donating tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to different candidates that the Democrat Party has has pointed out as the needing support. And it's, I mean, they don't, the candidate doesn't have to go out and raise money directly themselves. They don't have to do fundraising. They just collect the money and uh, and use it. So they, they, it was a big difference in my race against uh, Jackie Rosen. I lost to Jackie Rosen by 1% in 2016. She's now a U.S. senator. I lost her by 1%, and I worked my tail off. I raised about $3 million, or maybe that was $2.3 million that year. And she raised almost $3 million just from Blue alone. And Which meant she didn't have to make one phone call for that. She didn't have to go to, to one fundraiser for that. It literally was put in this giant mush pot and then just divvied out. And she could wake up one morning and go, oh, look what's in my bank account. Yeah. How amazing. And then she raised some herself and had the third party money. And she outspent me two to one. And it was worse in 2018. And this happened to everybody. I talked with Dean Heller, and uh, uh, who, who lost the Senate race. I talked with... Um, uh, uh, Laxalt, who lost the governor's race, and the same thing. Act Blue raised tons of money for the, the Democrat candidates in that race, and we were outspent significantly. I believe uh, Susie Lee had raised almost four million dollars from Act Blue that election. And anyways, it, the Republicans said, "Hey, they finally figured out what was going on, and right. we can't compete that way." So they started something called Win Red. But when red hasn't been nearly as effective raising the money, but even more so than that, the money they do raise, the majority of it has gone to PACs. And leadership um, um, entities that um, that uh, the candidates don't get direct access to. They have to rely upon whatever the PAC is or the leadership person to uh, to put the money into their campaign. Not only does yeah, because it, they can't coordinate. So they literally the candidate has to hope and pray that this third party PAC has their best interest and is making a great strategic move. Well, again, the third party PACs are doing the same thing that McConnell and and uh, McCarthy are doing. That they're, they're they're taking their favorite candidate and that they're they're that they want to run for whatever personal reasons and they spend it. But bigger than that is when a PAC buys television time, or any third party group buys television time, they pay the highest rate uh, that stations can charge. Uh, when a candidate does it by federal law, they have to charge the candidate the lowest rate. So in this last uh, Senate race, uh, Adam Laxalt was buying uh, uh, time that was uh, one-tenth of what the, no, I'm sorry, Cortez, who had the money individually, she's buying TV time at one-tenth of what Adam Laxalt's PACs are paying. They're paying 10 times of what she was paying. And the money d differential makes a huge difference in politics. Sometimes you can overcome it, but more likely than not, you can't unless there's something out there that's really pushing the voters. And uh, and everybody paid a price, and that it certainly cost Adam Laxalt his race. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, he was out there doing his best. He was, I don't know how many bus tours he did, but, you know, it's he was out there a lot. He was trying to get in front of the people as often as he could. But once again, when you can just wake up to a, a pretty penny put into your bank account with no work on your behalf, he still had to go out and do the hard work. So it takes time away from kissing babies and shaking hands. And to show how important money is, I'm just give you a perspective. When Harry Reid ran for re-election 2010, he spent $25 million, he and the, and the outside groups. And everybody said, that's outrageous. That's the most anybody has spent in a race. And, and they thought it was crazy. Well, this year, Catherine Cortez spent $122 million. So we're talking about 12 years later, it's gone up 400 plus percent. And she raised 40 million of that through Act Blue. 40 million she raised directly through Act Blue. And uh, it's hard to overcome. Well, the, the other issue that I think we struggled with overall was um, election fraud being such a major uh, 
discussion. You know, I know the Republican Party is passionate about the election fraud issues, and there's a lot of people that are suspicious and, and, and questionable and, and believe that something happened in the 2020 elections. I can tell you, in my opinion, I, there, it, there was a lot of weird things that happened, and it, we don't have time to go into it all. But you can't claim voter fraud if you don't produce some type of concrete evidence or else you lose credibility. And I mentioned this in the past. You know, I'm on the, I was on the Douglas County Commu uh, Central <laughs> Committee until they kicked me off for uh, supporting um, a Democrat over Michelle Fiore. But anyways, I went to two of their meetings and the Republican um, National, Committee, National man. Committee man, Jim DeGrafferty, got up and he told this rabid group of Republicans, we have all this evidence of voter fraud and, da, 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 and we got 2,200 people that had died that voted in the last election. So I raised my hand. I said, this is wonderful. You know, I've always had concerns about voter fraud and, and you have black and white proof that it happened. If you give us the names of the people who died, we can, we can publicly expose that they voted and who can argue against it. We got right. proof of it. And the graphic says, oh, I can't do that. The judge ordered me not to. And I said, well, so I went and I got the court order and the judge never said that. So then he comes back at the next meeting after he knows I called him out on it. He says exactly the same thing. And people are cheering him. Oh, this is great. And I say to him, I said, Jim, what are the names? The court order doesn't, didn't, the judge never said you couldn't give that, those names up. And instead he just ignored my question and went on. So the point of the matter is this, he got a lot of um, people riled up and emotional by making those claims. But when you can't back it up with facts, you don't have the factual documentation to prove it. You lose all credibility. And that's what the Republican Party did across the country, but particularly here in Nevada. They lost all credibility when they were discussing voter fraud, when they had issues that they should have stuck on that I think would have resonated with the voters and maybe helped us get this, uh, the, the, these new laws um, re reversed. Uh, for example, we're given a universal mail-in balance. Most of us don't agree with that. I right. mean, if you, it used to be that you had to apply for a, a mail ballot and you had to have a reason. Now, that under the guise of COVID, uh, the Democrats both uh, the controlled assembly, the Senate and the governor's office, they passed a law that said, oh, we're going to send them out to everybody, even people that have moved out of state, even people that uh, moved from a different home, they're going to get ballots. And we don't care that there's tens of thousands of ballots floating around. OK, well, you say if you're going to do that, then you better really verify the signatures and make sure they match because you got all these ballots floating around and you don't know who has access to them. So make sure those signatures match. So you know what the Democrat uh, Register of, 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 of um, Clark. Clark did. He lowered the verification level to verify the signatures that came in on mail and ballots to the lowest level the manufacturer of the software recommended. Instead of saying, hey, we want a higher level to make sure that the integrity of the ballot is there, he lowers it to the lowest level possible so that more ballots get put through. And you know what? It was great. There is a reporter. Well, he runs an opinion. He writes an opinion piece for the Las Vegas Review Journal. His name's Victor Jakes. So, in 2020, he talked 11 voters into allowing him to sign their name with his signature and submit them to the uh, uh, elections department. And nine of those 11 were accepted, even though they were all uh, invalid. And this last election, he had 11, and um, there were six of them that were accepted. So, the the Lowering the, the signature verification level of uh, resulted in less than 50% of the ballots being caught, uh, bad signatures being caught. And then ballot harvesting. Yeah, I was going to get into ballot harvesting yeah. to point but, up at the signs. So. Okay, well, yeah, because we're going to be going to a commercial. But, yeah, okay, when we come back on Amy, we'll touch on ballot harvesting. And then I want to talk about the little weasel that finally had his last press conference, Dr. Fauci. The Delta and Bonanza saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces. A truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special events and memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by 
your experienced staff with your every expectation in mind, including cakes, flowers, photography, videography, music, and party amenities. Complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings. Since 1865, the Delta and Bonanza Saloon's guests have come from every state in the union. Now it's your turn. No event is too large or too small. Let the Delta and Bonanza Saloon's plan your next incredible event. Call Jesse at 775-847. 7-0-7-8-9. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPMV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones. Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you. And they have a professional assistant on site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775 356 1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business? Just call 775 356 1004 or go to lrpnv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Men in the Math, does every week. Just go to lrpnv.com. That's lrpnv.com or call 775 356 1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. Charbecue the Butcher's Kitchen would like to thank every customer for your loyalty and continued support through these challenging times. Call for takeout and delivery of rib tips, brisket, ahi tuna, roasted veggies, and much more. Charbecue is open from 11 to 7 Monday through Saturday and delivers hot food safe and healthy. Call 499-5855 for details. 499-5855 Charbecue as featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Get real. Get into Charbecue Reno. Hey everyone, Dave Escher here introducing you to our new store, the Nevada Marketplace, in the Reno Town Mall. Anchored with the Buy Nevada First gift shop, we've added over 60 micro shops, giving locals a place to set up their dream store. We are now 20,000 square feet strong, supporting over 250 local merchants with all things made in Nevada and more. We have more locals in one place than anywhere in the state, ready to help you find that perfect gift. We're open every day with easy parking at Peckham and Virginia. Go to BuyNevadaFirst.com, your source for all things local. And we're back on Amy. I'm Amy Tarkanian, alongside with my husband and Douglas County Commissioner, Danny Tarkanian, and author of the new blog, Can You Handle the Truth? And that's what we've been touching on uh, for most of this hour. And it's, it's a whole blog on where we were, how we got where we are now, and how can we fix it in the future. So then that way... Um, we can start winning, and I like winning. Winning beats losing, but uh, we do have some some areas that need to be discussed without you know each other demeaning one another and harassing one another. It's important that we have dissenting opinions, and we can also see what we agree on. So we were just discussing the new election laws that were passed under the guise of COVID, uh, where we had a Democratic um, majority in the legislature, and they passed all mail-in ballots, which I know a lot of people were not happy about, and ballot harvesting, which that is a whole nother part of this now uh, political game that Republicans need to really catch up on. Well, you know, ballot, harvest, keep it. ballot harvesting is one of the worst things out there. There's no way you can protect the integrity of the ballot by allowing ballot harvesting. And for people that don't know what ballot harvesting is, it means you can go out and collect a ballot from anybody and then turn it in. And just think about this. You have a union boss and he goes by and knocks on the home of each union worker and says, hey, I want your ballots. How many union workers, one, aren't going to give it to them? And number two, aren't going to be worried that somehow uh, this guy gets access to see what he voted on or if they think that you voted for a Republican, they just may just not um, turn the ballot in and you have no uh, proof that uh, that it was him and you, there's no way you can protect the integrity of the ballot with ballot harvesting. You can go by a senior center and you can have a big function there and have people sign their ballots in front of you and turn them in. You, there's no buddy overseeing what's going on and, uh, and, and it's completely wrong. I think you're not going to get a change uh, in Nevada because uh, the Democrats are not are going to control either the Assembly or the Senate uh, because of the way uh, the demographics are made here in Nevada. So how do you get a change? You got to do it through the initiative process. And I think if enough people understand um, how this works, that it would be voted down and banned completely through the initiative. Yes, 
<laughs> and, uh, and so instead of going out there and saying, there's systemic voter fraud with no evidence, that's what you need to be focused on. Yeah, we were talking about what cost us this last election. I think the, the Republicans focusing on false or at least unsubstantiated voter fraud claims instead of focusing on where the real vulnerabilities are happening and where voter fraud could be occurring. Uh, they they lost uh, they lost uh, the votes of the, definitely the independents. Right, and I think that's what then also alluded to the big tent deflating. Well, you know, look at it. the Republican Party has turned into a party of we want you to agree with me 100, or we're, we're going to get rid of you. At least they have here in Nevada, and it's not even just agree with with uh, the Republican Party 100. percent You better agree with the GOP chair Mike McDonald 100. percent If not, they're going to ban you from the party, and they they banned over 100 of the top activists, people that helped work on President Trump's campaign in 16 and his reelection in 20, people that were great at getting uh, voters to turn out. They ban them because they, those voters may, I'm not sorry, those volunteers may not have agreed with Michael McDonald. In Arizona, I mean, which was really incredible, you had a um, Carrie, Lake. Carrie Lake, the governor's uh, candidate, just before the election, she gets up at this rally with all these Republicans and says, if you're not, a, if you are a John McCain supporter, you should leave now. You're not welcome. Well, come on, you want to get elected, don't you? Shoot, you should be. You need every vote. You need every vote. What kind of a genius strategy is that? Yeah, and and you know the big tent is is turned into a very small little um, roof over our heads, and and we're paying the price of the polls for it. Now we have a lemonade stand. A lemonade stand. <laughs> yes. um, it's so the the reed machine, though. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know what happens behind the scenes, and you know what makes an effective party or not, and. Uh, when Harry Reid ran for office, uh, re-election 2010, he was worried he was going to lose. So he went out and raised a lot of money. He built this ground game and this field game where they, 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 uh, they went out. It's not an empire. He just did a great job putting it together. Republicans had the same opportunity. You know, we had John Ensign in the Senate. We had um, Sandoval as the governor. We've had a lot of really top uh, elected officials that could have done the same thing. But what Harry Reid did was he raised a lot of money, built this uh, field organization where they had, uh, went out and they registered voters. They identified who their supporters were and they got their supporters to vote. And the Democrats ever since then have won uh, all the elections except 2014 when they really didn't have a candidate running against Sandoval. So uh, it, it's been a Democrat state ever since then. And we, as I mentioned, we've had Republicans who could have done the same thing. Uh, governor Sandoval certainly had the ability to do so as a governor and uh, John Ensign and, uh, as a senator. And uh, and they didn't do it. They, instead, they relied upon the, the state party to do it, which is really their responsibility. But Mike McDonald as a state chair has completely ignored that. And uh, and again, we, we don't have that kind of field uh, program and the Democrats do and it's cost us in the election. OK, so we had mentioned COVID um, in the election laws that were changed um, under the guise of COVID. And we have now what's going on in China, um, huge protests, a huge uprising of the younger generation. And uh, they are tired of this zero COVID policy where they've been locked up for months. Yeah, if they get if they find one person that tests positive for COVID in your neighborhood, they lock up the whole neighborhood. Yeah, the whole town. I mean, it's they they have a zero tolerance for uh, COVID. And yeah. even when the rest of the world has realized that, hey, we don't need to lock up uh, societies. And you know, quite honestly, it was detrimental to lock up all these societies. China's gone the opposite. Yeah, and um, and it's it's terrifying because actually some of these protesters are not just being put in prison, but they're they're dying. They're dying while they're trying to fight um, for for everyone's rights. And um, thankfully, uh, we had um, Fauci, Dr. Fauci, the fraud, uh, give his last press conference um, a week ago. But the that son of a gun, he's out there still. Blaming the other side for misinformation, disinformation. It's never his fault, even though uh, we now know that he was part of the whole beginnings of COVID in Wuhan. And um, now they're saying that so, well, they may well, want to lock us down again. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to go back and explain to the public what you're talking about, uh, what well, he might have been involved in the original um, release of the COVID virus. Yeah. So, when COVID came out, um, they blamed it on some 
uh, uh, bats. bats that were flying around in this. It's like a uh, wet market. In the, at the wet market. But coincidentally, right next to the wet market was this laboratory that um, Fauci helped provide a, American funds, taxpayer money, yes. to fund a what they call gain of function. Gain of function re research. Re research uh, where they test uh, virus, viruses that might come up so they can find out how to stop them quicker. And one of them was this COVID virus. So who in the right mind thinks, oh, coincidentally, these bats flew over the wet market and started this? Or do you think maybe this virus that was being tested uh, in this lab, which they said had less protections than a normal hospital, safeguards than a normal hospital here in the United States, somehow that was released and cause the COVID deal. Of course, it happened there. I mean, you could. You, yeah. It's it's like whoever believes that the wet market uh, uh, caused the the bats, the wet market caused the virus. They believe Epstein killed themselves. It's it's that ridiculous. <laughs> I, I don't mean and, to laugh at that, but and, you're right. And, and the fact is, the Fauci was the one who helped fund with American taxpayer money the research that went on in there. And then he's out there. Like he's a savior, and he's 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 proclaiming to people how we need to stop this, and, and most of the things that he said turned out not to be true. And you know, look at we none of nobody knew exactly what the virus was, right. although maybe with his gain of function research, he should have had a better idea. But you know, he's going to make mistakes, and they all were going to make different mistakes. But instead of him being honest and saying, "Hey, this is how it was originated," he went on a full court press to try to squelch any topic so that anybody who said that he tried to get him fired and and uh, ostracized and to this day he still tries to deny it even though there's overwhelming evidence that uh, that that's where the virus started and then the other thing is he comes out with these wrong um pro proclamations in fact at first he said oh you we don't need a um mask in fact you got to wash your hands four or five six times a day and that's going to stop it and we found out that's not the case and then all of a sudden he jumped on the mask band, man, uh, bandwagon and where hey, let's wear three masks and uh, that'll yeah. solve it. And then you find out only certain masks are going to stop it. So you have all these people wearing these cloth masks that aren't going to stop them from catching COVID. And they all do so because uh, Fauci tells them it's going to protect them and it's completely false. And, and also don't forget, because I do the majority of the grocery shopping, we were also told you need to yeah. wipe down every item before you bring yeah. it into the house. And then we find out that wasn't true. Yeah, I remember you being in the garage for, you know, half hour at a time. Yeah, yeah. And so now they're saying because um, the flu, which it's a season, a flu season, we know it's coming every season. You've got the flu and you've got RSV. And RSV is very deadly for, especially for infants. And so there's been a major uptick in that. So now they're threatening, especially with after the holidays and traveling and now with Christmas coming up, that the, the masks may return. I can tell you what. You're going to see a lot of very unhappy people wow. throwing some fits if they go that route again. I can't imagine that they would ever get the authority to do so because it's been so, one, so debunked that it's even helped. And yeah. two, so many people are against it. We right now have to wear a mask when we go into the medical uh treatment, whether it's a, a hospital or to see a doctor. Right. And I forget how how tough it is to breathe with that mask on because, you know, we did it for so long. Uh, but our son just went in recently and I'm just counting in the seconds until I can get out where I can take the mask off again. Imagine saying to people again, you're going to put these on and wear them full time? Nope. That's not going to happen. I can tell you that right now. They can try it. They can try it all they want, but I think you're going to see a major uprising of people who have had it. And I'm so glad that Dr. Fauci is gone. Once again, if you want to sign up for my husband's blog, Can You Handle the Truth? Go to Tark's truth at gmail.com and we would love to hear from you once again thanks also for joining amy i'm amy tarkanian alongside with my husband danny tarkanian and you have a wonderful week see you next monday amy one in three adults in america have pre-diabetes but most don't know it to let people know it can be reversed before it becomes type 2 diabetes, professional basketball player Julius Randle is doing everything in reverse. I'm only dunking with reverse windmills. I drove the whole way to practice in reverse. I don't recommend it. This move is called the reverse shuffle. I do recommend it. 